Hello everyone. Have you ever thought, why are there borders on a geographical map of a place? It may be a city, state or country, they all are defined by an area. A border circumscribing that area demarcates and parts it from other areas. But, who made it? What's the need? Do they really exist in nature? And, more burning question, are there any differences in the people living beyond these borders? Other than the religions followed, the languages spoken, and the beliefs believed in, are there any differences? If there were, why did the Almighty not create a whole different world for each of these different types of people? In the poem that we are going to study today, the geography lesson, the poet puts the same question in a more interesting way. Chulfika Gose, born 13 March 1935, is a novelist, poet and essayist. A native of India and current resident of Texas, his works are primarily magical realism, blending fantasy and harsh realism. He has written mostly to emphasize the folly of humans. He portrays the conflict of nature and human tendency. As a person who faced the enigma of the greatest ever migration of population from one country to another and the adversities due to it, he is strongly against any divisions made in the name of class, caste, religion or country. The poem is written from the perspective of a person who is observing the city from above, seeing it seated in a jet plane. As he ascends the heights in the sky, he is able to understand the real meaning of geography. It inculcates a dislike in the reader about political divisions. The poet wrote the poem that displays his concern for the divide and friction faced by men. When he observed things from the height he could see logical development of existence. It became clear to him why the cities have taken a specific shape and development. He looked at the miniature shape of the city where a mile is reduced to inches on a scale. He emphasized that what looked haphazard and unplanned has a logic for its sustenance. When the poet's plane reached the height of 10,000 feet, he was able to comprehend the logic behind setting near water. Men settled in valleys and caves in the vicinity of water resources. He reiterated that land and water attracted the man's attention for habitation. When the plane reached another 6 miles, it became obvious to the poet about the geographical condition. He understood that the earth is round, consisted of landmass and endless water. But he feels miserable at the sorry state of the conditions, ill will, jealousy, barriers, borders were obvious in place of coexistence and mutual respect. Why Weir has built walls across cities and tried to harm others. The central idea of the poem is that earth is vast. It has more water than land. The people settled along the water bodies in an unorganized way. They are same yet are divided by borders. They have hatred against each other and often kill each other. The poet fails to understand that why people are not living peacefully if earth is one. In the first stanza of this poem the poet describes his city. He tells us how it appears from the window of an aeroplane. It is clear that the city developed just as it was necessary for the people. So what looked haphazard on ground looked inevitable from the sky. Now the plane rises to a height of 10,000 feet. The poet can see the logic of geography. He can see why the cities in the country have grown along the rivers. 
The valleys are populated for the same reason. It is land and water together that attracts the people. When the plain rises still higher, six miles up, the earth looks round. From that height it is clear that the earth has more sea than land. However, one question remains unanswered. It is difficult to understand why people hate and kill one another. Thus it is easy to understand the logic of geography from a height. However, it is very difficult to understand why humans hate one another. It remains a mystery. There are a number of organizations working to bring peace, but it is not possible unless we are ready for it. Each and every chapter or poem that we study has a purpose. This is the time your minds are shaped. A human mind is working at its best during the teenage. That is, between 14 to 19 years of age. This poem is also included with the same. You are the future of the world, you'll shape the world the way you wish to. Having a better vision is what we need in young generation. This poem tries to delineate the concept of differences. Before I bid you bye, imagine a world you where there were no borders, the money wasted in money, would have been used in something much better. This is not against army or protection, but army is an organization which we need to protect us, but if there were no wars, the army personals would also have been at peace. Thank you very much. Broaden your perspective.